within yourselves. We have Abraham to our father. But I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So you can't say, oh, Abraham is my father, you know, because I've got a good lineage, I won't go to hell. So you came back, sister, so you got a minute for God's word? How, how long is it going to take? How long? Yeah. How strong is your faith? Oh, I've got faith, I've got the church. I, uh, I'm so so, so you go to church, let me just ask you a question, right? Here. So in church... Here! Hey, this one's in the way. Here! So, 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 in church... Yeah. Have they taught you, you know, what happens to bowls? Let me just ask you a quick question. Excuse me, little man, where are you going? Uh, you should listen, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to take too much of your time, sister. I know you're in a rush yet, but I just want to ask you a quick question. So in church, they tell you, right? Um, have you learned what happens when you die if you don't listen to God versus if you do listen to God? What happens? Yeah, go on. What's that? Yeah. 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 What will happen to you then if you follow the word of God? What happens? Oh, he's a handful, man. So, so let me just give you a scripture anyway, sister. I'll give you a quick scripture because I can see it's not easy, right? So here we go. So the Bible tells us this, yeah? Matthew chapter 13 and verse 43 says, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. So only the righteous will be inheriting God's kingdom, right? So I'm going to show you one thing that you need to do to be righteous, yeah? So this is the book now of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25, yeah? So what does it mean to be righteous? What makes somebody righteous? Amen. So obeying God's commandments. So check this out. This is, you're right. Deuteronomy 6 and 25 says, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he have commanded us. So yeah, obeying the commandments. And here's one commandment we have to keep to get to heaven, yeah? So this is Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 8. And it says this, And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch a dead carcass. So the Bible says the swine is unclean, and it's a commandment not to eat swine. Do you know what animal swine is? Yeah. What animal is swine? Um, it's a bird, bird, bird. It's pig. Swine is another word for a pig. Oh, it's yeah, poor. It's the swine bird. Yeah, no, it's actually, it's actually pork, sister. So do you know it's actually a sin in the Bible to eat pork? I know because that, um, 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 it was coming into, into those pigs, yeah? Okay, so do you eat pork, sister? Oh. When was the last time you ate pork, would you say? Do you, do you, do you eat pork, yes or no? I think no. No, no. Yeah. If someone gave you some pork to eat now, would you eat it? Well, according to the Bible, should you eat pork? No. No, because it's not righteous to eat pork, sister. So, so here's, here's the final point, sister. Here's the final point. It's, you're only righteous if you have faith in God by keeping his commandments, right? And the Bible tells us we're not supposed to eat pork. So the Bible tells us we're not supposed to eat pork, sister. So I'm just trying to let you know, don't eat pork, because in the Bible it tells us not to eat pork. It's unrighteous, and only the righteous will inherit the kingdom of God. Only the righteous will inherit the kingdom. All right, God bless. Thanks for your time. God bless you. Take care. All right, so yeah, praise the most high. So just going back to the book of Matthew, chapter 3 now, yeah? So the only way that you can flee the hellfire and the wrath to come, okay, is in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, and verse 6. You got a minute for God's word, bro? You good? Do you believe in God? Yeah? Do you know about God? Not really. Okay, why don't you know about God? Obviously, I went to church before, innit? Yeah. I mean, like, I was being like, 
classes. Like Sunday school classes and that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so how comes you don't really study about God these days then? How comes you don't know too much? You say you don't know about God, you know what I'm saying? How come? Yeah. Can I show you a little something about God? Because do you think it's important to know God? Yeah. Yeah? You believe? Yeah. All right, of course, bro, because the Bible shows us, yeah, that only through knowing God, yeah, we can be saved at the end of the day, yeah? So, can I just show you a little something about knowing God real quick, yeah? So, check this out, yeah? So, this is the book of Deuteronomy. Actually, here we go. So, this is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 3. And the Bible tells us this, yeah? It reads, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. So the only way that you know Jesus is if you do what? What did the verse just say then? If you keep his commandments, yeah? The Bible says, He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So the Bible says, if you say you know God and you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. And the truth ain't in you. So the one criteria to let you know if someone knows God or doesn't know God is if they do what in their life? I'll show you again, check it, yeah? Because this is an important one, bro, yeah? And it's easy to understand. It says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So the only way someone knows God is if they do what? If, if they keep God's commandments, it said. Yeah? And anyone that doesn't keep God's commandments, the Bible says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So if you say that you know God and don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. So the only that someone knows God, yeah, is by keeping the commandments, yeah? And this is how you know Jesus. And the reason why Jesus came real quick, let me just show you this. This is the book of John chapter 1 and verse 18. All right, John chapter 1 and verse 18 says, No man hath seen God at any time, but only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of a Father, hath declared him. So the Bible says no one has physically seen God, but the only begotten Son of God, who is who? Who's the only begotten Son of God? Now, who is God's only begotten Son? Do you know? All right, let me show you who God's only begotten Son is, yeah? So here we go. Everything okay? God bless. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 16. So you said you went to church, but you don't know who the Son of God is. So I'll show you who he is, yeah? Matthew, chapter 16, and verse 16, it says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Jesus is the Son of the God, the Son of the living God, yeah? All right. And the Bible tells us that the reason why Jesus came was to declare God, was to reveal who God is to us. Because when Jesus came, yeah, check this out real quick. He came into the earth to show us this. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter three and verse 16. And I'm gonna show you a key commandment, yeah, that God has given us. First Timothy three and verse 16 says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So the Bible says that God was revealed to us in the flesh. So how would we as mankind get to know God? God's all the way up in the sky. No one's ever seen him. So what God did is he revealed himself by sending his son in human flesh. So people could see Jesus Christ living and through Christ's life, you get to know what God is like by the way that Jesus was acting. Because the Bible says about Jesus, yeah? And this is why you need to know Jesus to know God. It's in the book of Hebrews chapter one and verse two it says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So God has spoken unto us by his what? It, by his son, that's how God has spoke to us, yeah? And it says here, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. So God made his son, Jesus Christ, the heir of all things. An heir is someone who inherits. Say your dad had a lot of land and a lot of gold, and you was his heir, when your dad passes on, you'd inherit all of that. But God is the father of Jesus. So what God has done is he's given his inheritance, his glory and his power to his son. So Jesus Christ has all the power because God has all the power and he's given it to his son. Yeah? Go on then. What's the commandment to keep? What's the commandment to keep, yeah? All right, check this out. Here's some commandments to keep, yeah? 
All right, so this is now the book of 1 Corinthians, yeah? Chapter 6 and verse 9. And it reads this. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. So the Bible says the unrighteous won't inherit God's kingdom. Unrighteous means people that don't keep the commandments. So here's some commandments that people break here yeah, that we have to keep. It says, neither fornicators. So the Bible says fornicators won't inherit the kingdom of God. You know what fornication is? Yeah? So fornication is a sin. Have you got an idea of what it is? I think I know what it is. Yeah, but you, have you got an idea of what fornication is? No idea. So here's fornication. It's a sin that happens if you don't do this yet. First Corinthians 7 and 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, so here's the only way to avoid that sin, yeah? It says, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So the only way to avoid fornication is to be what? And it's to be married, you get me? So fornication is when you have sex with someone that you're not what? You're not married to. So according to the Bible, yeah, God doesn't want people to have sex with people they're not married to. That is called fornication. So if you're having sex with a girl that you're dealing with, calling your girlfriend or a link or whatever you're calling her, yeah, that would be called what? Look at it with your eyes, bro. You see that there? Oh, here, fornication, yeah? And if you commit fornication, you're a fornicator. You get me? Fornicator. Oh, that's, that's, that's a sin that you won't go to heaven if you do. You get me? So it says right here, yeah? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. So fornicators don't go to heaven. Nor idolaters. You know what idolater is? You know what idol worshipper is? So what idol worshipper is when you worship like a false god, yeah? For example, the Bible shows in the book of Leviticus because there's a lot of people out there that make like um, statues of like their different gods like they might make a statue of Buddha and they might you know bow down to it and worship that statue that is called idol worship worshiping anything that's not God is idolatry for example some Christians that wear a cross yeah and the cross is actually an idol because the Bible tells us that we're not meant to make I'll show you real quick check it out yeah in the Ten Commandments but here we go so this is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 4 it says Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord 